Thank you for joining us tonight for this critical conversation. However, before we begin, it's important to say his name and to take a moment of silence in memory of Mr. George Floyd. Thank you. Tonight is the first. The first in a series of many conversations. We, the DPD, must be open to listen to our community. Neil Yarbrough is here with us tonight. Neil and other young leaders in our community offered space in their march on Monday and part of our conversation surrounded a virtual town hall, a way to hear directly from our community the hurt, the anger, and the frustration that people are feeling here in our city. This is just one way to bring us together. However, we must acknowledge that some people will not have access to this. People like those experiencing homelessness and those impacted by the wealth gap that creates the digital divide. However, we want to create ways that their voices can be heard. We are using this town hall as a listening session to hear from you, your concerns, and your ideas on how to move the Denver Police Department forward. There is no formal agenda, just a listening session and question and answers. We also pledge that we will continue to do this work. One thing that we ask is that people be respectful in their questions. If you have questions outside this platform, please email them to us at dpdlistens at denvergov.org. We did receive several questions on our Facebook page and we will start with those. If you do have questions for tonight, please enter them in the chat box. Now, as a reminder, this is only a one hour session and we will do our best to try to get to every question that you have. However, uh, we pledge to take in those questions and do everything possible to answer them as quickly as we can. I wanna remind folks that this is again, just the first of many sessions to have ongoing conversations to bring about meaningful change. And with that, we'll open it up for questions. Okay, so I'm going to read off a few questions that we got from the from Facebook. Um, some people were uh, wanting to ask some questions to the police department. So uh, I have a few of them here. Um, um, so we'll just I'll just get started with that. So the first question is from Jessica Solis Silva. Um, she says, how do you intend or what is your plan to rebuild community trust? I would like to see proactive steps to hire more people of color in your department. So uh, two parts and, and uh, two very difficult questions. Uh, trust is something that uh, takes a lot to build up. It's relationship building and things that we've recently seen a uh, thousand miles away, as well as things that we've seen here in our own community. Actions that, that uh, members of our department have taken have really knocked down that trust. And uh, you're right, we need to work to build that up. And we do that 
by having ongoing dialogue. We need dialogue uh, to help us move forward and, and our commitment is to do that as well as to hire, to recruit, to look for those voices, uh, the people from our community that can bring forward their experiences, uh, that what they're feeling in, in their own neighborhoods to help us uh, learn from that perspective and do better as a police department. The second question is from Amanda L Lotus. So I can't really see. I hope I'm not pronouncing it wrong. L Lotus. Um, she says, I'm concerning. I'm concerned at the overly aggressive response by DPD to the protest. The use of rubber bullets and the treatment of those trying to peacefully protest. I will realize I realize you will say that you only act you only acted aggressive in the response to aggression, but I know that's not true. How do you plan to hold police responsible for their actions? Uh, thank you again. Uh, we're talking about accountability here. Uh, accountability is a big part of what we need to do to build trust and uh, just like I have to hold our officers accountable for their actions. Uh, I must be held accountable as well. And we will review those. Uh, we will absolutely have an independent uh, review as well to include the Office of Independent Monitor. And we must take some, some very uh, hard or, or a very hard look and, and critical review of, of what took place. We certainly do not want to negatively impact peaceful protests protesters. We, we must focus on the individuals, the individuals that are causing harm to the people of Denver and the individuals that are causing harm to our community. And uh, the focus should be on that. Those folks that are hijacking the, the message, that are hijacking the moment and hijacking the movement. Uh, there, violence has no place in, in, in our community and we have to do a better job of identifying those individuals that are causing the violence or destruction, hold them accountable without negatively impacting the, the folks that are here to, to really get uh, their voices heard. And uh, again, I'm I'm terrible with these names, but um, Denise Valaba, but Denise Val Valabia, um, says, well, actually, this is this is more of a statement. She, she, uh, it says requires require offer require observing officers to intervene when their fellow officer is using unnecessary force, especially when someone is already detained. Uh, it, it's a great statement and, and I'll just say yes, uh, you're right. Uh, we, we saw this, uh, we saw this for uh, on the video and uh, any one of those three other officers could have intervened and uh, I, we're, we're not going to say that 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 uh, couldn't happen here. We need to say we need to make sure that that doesn't happen here, that there is a duty to, to intervene and we see what the horrific tragic loss of life can happen when when officers don't intervene in these unnecessary uses of force. Okay. Um, here's another good one. Dia Smith. Um, says how can how can we better help the good officers so we can find some kind of way to restore faith in the police here in Denver? How will you apply this whole situation and loss of innocent life to change your departments? Is there a way the police can show they are not above their badge in a way that honors all people as equals? Well, uh, one, uh, we, we have to, uh, one, acknowledge uh, the, the mistakes that, that 
uh, law enforcement historically uh, has made, as well as uh, this department and, and uh, individual actions of our officers. Uh, it, it's about building that trust, and when that trust is, is violated, it's very difficult to, to bring it back. Um, we must uh, hold ourselves accountable uh, accountable for our, our actions and pledge to do better, but we, we certainly need the community's help and input in this, and, and that's what we are asking for here. So uh, the way that I, I can best guess, and, and we certainly need uh, community involvement uh, in this or community voice uh, in this is uh, by working together. Um, here's a good one from uh, Ken Church. Uh, Ken Church from Facebook says, is there any policy to remove police officers that are involved or associated with any um, white supremacist or racist group? If not, do you plan on implementing one? So, uh, Racism has no place in law enforcement. It certainly doesn't have any place in the Denver uh, Police Department. And really, if we uh, go backwards and, and we look at, at uh, not just what happened, right? Not just what happened in Minneapolis or what happened in in the last uh, several days here in Denver, uh, the why that, that things happen. And uh, some of this is uh, structural racism that impacts the criminal justice system, the public health system, it impacts, is, impacts housing, it in, impacts uh, our economic system, and uh, we have to look at this in a holistic uh, approach, more towards those whys. But uh, when, when we talk about uh, officers that, that may have uh, any kind of, of of bias, racist uh, bias views, uh, we can't tolerate that. And and together, we, we need to make sure that we're working to ensure that, that 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 those folks aren't hired within the police department. And if they are identified, that they're immediately removed because that's uh, antithetical to uh, our values. Thank you. Let's see. Um. David, David Snyder um, from Facebook says, can you please speak more as to why the other two officers who committed the support of the riot gear photo message have not been disciplined? So uh, if, if you don't mind, um, I just want to touch on on that social media post. Um, it's inexcusable. Uh, it, it's uh, the opposite of what we're trying to do. It's, it's the opposite of what we and, and the other young leaders talked about. We're trying to uh, come together and uh, what was said in that post uh, really uh, served to, to escalate tensions and uh, that cannot happen. It cannot happen in a moment of crisis when uh, our only path forward is to come together. That serves as, as a divide. And so the officer that was uh, responsible for that post uh, was disciplined and he was uh, disciplined quickly. And that discipline included that uh, that person is no longer a member of this uh, police department. Subsequent investigations related to, to that and other actions, we will uh, take a hard look at, uh, as well as that independent view or that uh, monitorship from the Office of Independent Monitor. Uh, and and uh, we must hold ourselves accountable. We must learn from our actions. Uh, we've got to do better. We, we can't uh, go down the same path. Thank you for that. Let's see. Um, Kelsey, Kelsey Lewis says, thank you for holding this meeting. Are internal affairs investigations carried out wholly within the Denver Police Department or through the Office of the Independent Monitor? So, uh, it was Kelsey. Is that I, I, I forgot if Kelsey Kelsey Lewis. Kelsey. Um, so one and, and maybe we can uh, do this 
online where we can submit some links uh, to the Office of Independent Monitor. That way we can uh, share the full understanding of, of what that office uh, does. But uh, Internal Affairs does uh, review or does the investigations and those are fully monitored from the independent monitor from start to finish. And um, we'll, if, if somebody can on the chat line add uh, those direct links, then, then we can get that information uh, to Kelsey and others on how to file a complaint and what that process looks like. Okay, we have one from Chelsea, Chelsea Hansen. She says, what data backed policy does DPD use to counteract racism, prevent deaths in police encounters, and decrease unnecessary aggression and violence? So uh, I, I, I think some of these questions, uh, unfortunately, are, are, are going to be, uh, we just don't know or we need to look into. Uh, I can tell you that uh, we recognize that we need to do a better job uh, hiring. Uh, that's a, a big part of, of uh, law enforcement's area to improve. Uh, law enforcement needs to do a better job with, with training. We certainly need to do a better job with discipline and accountability. Uh, we, we try or, or we call ourselves a, a data-informed uh, police department. We, we call ourselves a, a police department that uh, wants to learn, but um, this is something that uh, is a, a little bit bigger uh, than, than strictly uh, our department. When we're talking about uh, individuals and, and human behavior, uh, we need to do better of, of identifying that early and, and addressing it uh, quickly. And, and we welcome any support that, that maybe uh, some of the folks on the line can, can point us to uh, a data informed uh, way to identify or address uh, this, this, this challenge or this issue. Okay. And then um, I'm going to I'm going to take a question away from this really quick. Um, so during a lot of the protests, there's a lot of people from sev several different backgrounds, uh, all ethnicities um, that are just hurt and, and they're and they're just angry. And a lot of people just don't feel hurt. Like um, we just feel like the things that we're saying is just falling on deaf, deaf ears and that uh, a lot of the uh, questions um, and I'll keep keep one question at a time, but a lot of the people don't feel heard. So what what um, can the Denver Police Department do to ensure the people that that and make us know and feel that we are being heard and, and that we are being felt and that pain is also um, being felt? So uh, a couple of parts, and please please help me. Uh, so I so I address each uh, concern in here. It's important that that we uh, that that our department listens. Now, uh, words are just words uh, until they become actions. Uh, Monday, certainly marching with you and the other young leaders, uh, talking to Dakota and Shira, uh, really uh, helped uh, me get a better informed perspective, uh, reflecting on, on what's taking place ha has really uh, helped that, that understanding. And uh, as, as we think about it, we're in the midst of a global pandemic, right? There's a great risk to us uh, marching together. And the fact that we have thousands of people, as, as you say, from all walks of life, yeah. that are willing to put their lives at risk yeah. to come together shows how important this is. Right. Certainly this is a message, right? This is a message that we have to listen to. But this moment, we need to make sure that we realize that this is the start of a movement, right. that this is a, the, the tipping point because we've had too many examples of this in the past. And it certainly would be easy to say, oh, well, that's that's that department or that's in a different state. Well. No, it, it, it's time that we all come together, that we all look at this and, and try to figure out how we can do better. And, uh, you know, uh, throughout this process, I, I can tell you that, uh, you know, there's a greater level of 
of awareness and a greater level of understanding, but this is just the start. We have a long way to go, but the fact that, that you, those other young leaders, the thousands of other folks uh, from, from, from every walk of life, young, old, uh, different races, different religions, different sexual orientations are all coming together. We all need to listen to, to this message uh, and, and be present for it. So um, this, and, and, and this is not just our city, the, the, and this is not just our state, and it's not just our country. Uh, they're having similar protests across the globe. So it is, uh, uh, I'm, I believe this is the tipping point and, and we uh, we have to do better. And, and our commitment is is uh, we're gonna be open to do better. Um, and I do um, wanna make sure that we get through um, a lot of these questions on Facebook since people took time out there to, to ask them. Um, and I just wanna ask one more question um, that I was hearing from some people. And it's a, it's a tough question, I know uh, we may not have an answer for it right now because this stuff is not only going on um, recently, but it's been going on for, uh, quite frankly, centuries. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess it's just a, um, what can we do to to make sure that this type of injustice and racist racism, what can we do to make sure that this doesn't happen again? Like, what can we do to feel confident that this is just not going to happen next year, next month. Like, what what can we do today to to try to prevent that from happening in the future? So, uh, I apologize. I I don't have the answer, but uh, I certainly recognize that uh, we're talking about four hundred years right. and uh, decades. Decades of trying uh, to to do better. Decades of 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 uh, getting it wrong. And, uh, and and having too many names like George Floyd, too many instances of injustice. Um, our pledge uh, on, on the micro level here in the police department is, is to listen and do better. But uh, there are some systemic aspects of this that impact the, the major systems that we live in. And uh, you know, as, as, as we become more aware in public safety and, and try to put a, a public health view on some of these, we, we got to back that up even more and look at these uh, major systems and, 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 and the inequities, uh, the bias, the inherent bias in some of these and, and uh, as, as a community, as a society. Uh, how uh, we, we can break those down, uh, identify uh, maybe through data, maybe, uh, you know, in different ways, working together uh, to try to uh, address those. But uh, on the micro level, the, the, the commitment uh, for the women and men that work in this uh, police department, that uh, we will look in the mirror uh, we, we, and we ask the community uh, to hold up that reflection and, and hold us accountable uh, to, to, to do our part to move forward, uh, recognizing that uh, uh, there's a long way to go. And, and uh, I, it, it, it's a, a lot of words for me to say, I don't know. And, and, and I really, uh, I don't know, but, I, but I'm hoping that we can come together and figure it out. Um, so I think um, we're gonna take some questions from the, from the chat. So I'll start with. So here's a question. Um, somebody wants to know from the chat about uh, the tear gas that are being used against uh, peaceful protesters. Is there is there? Can you speak on that? So. Um, you know, it's certainly not our intent for tear gas, uh, the pepper ball or the less lethal munition to impact uh, peaceful protesters. Uh, it, it, it's important that uh, we make space uh, uh, to hear uh, the voice, uh, the voice of the people that again are, are risking their lives to be heard. Um, it's unfortunate that that there are uh, a handful, a very small full of individual agitators that are hijacking, in, you know, early on in this process, early on in the in in these uh, 
protests, hijacking the peaceful protests and committing violence in our city, uh, hurting uh, the people of Denver and damaging and, and destroying uh, not only uh, public spaces, but some of these poor private uh, business owners that are just coming out of this uh, global pandemic, uh, these economic downturns and, and trying to make a living, trying to hire uh, and, uh, people to, to get them uh, employed in jobs and the economic uh, divide as, as a result of that as well. So uh, they certainly all fit together. Um, I, I, I can certainly uh, apologize to to the peaceful folks that have been negatively uh, impacted uh, by uh, this. Uh, it's certainly not uh, our uh, intent, and uh, we, I guess that's the best way I can answer at this moment. Um. So here's another question from the chat. It's another good one. It says, um, what deters a police officer from committing crimes when they can get many complaints against them without any consequences? Well, it's uh, accountability and, and we need to do a better job of accountability. And, and my commitment is, is to work with this community to do a better job of, of accountability. We'll keep some more from the chat. It says, um, someone says the last two nights officers kept their distance and protesters were more peaceful. What lessons can we take away from that? Uh, I, well, I, if you don't want mind, I want to commend you and, and other young leaders. Uh, there, there's many like you that that recognize that that this message is too important to allow others to hijack and uh, are, are stepping up and not uh, allowing the, the destruction or the harm to take place. Uh, you all uh, are, are important in, in keeping the peace here. This is exactly what we need. Uh, we need these uh, peaceful protests, the, uh, the, these marches uh, to continue, uh, to, con to, to continue to hear the voices and uh, we want to fully uh, support those. Um, the last two nights uh, have, have been very peaceful and uh, uh, we, we uh, really are, are thankful for that. Um, here's a really, here's a really good one from the chat. It says, um, if good cops exist, why aren't we hearing from more of them speaking out against police brutality? Uh, that, that's a, uh, a righteous question. Um, I can tell you that uh, looking into to, to the hearts uh, of the women and men that make up uh, the Denver Police Department, that the vast majority of them, the vast majority of, of our officers that are out there putting themselves in harm's way in order to protect this community are just that, good cops. And I can tell you from uh, talking uh, to our officers as well that uh, they find uh, these actions despicable. They see this as being horrific, and uh, we 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 recognize as a profession, we recognize as a department that we have to do better. And standing up, uh, voicing our disgust with this type of injustice has to take place. We have to make sure that that uh, our 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 great. Uh, big hearted officers uh, are, are valued that, that they're heard and that they uh, step into that space and, and not tolerate or not allow uh, the, 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 the type of uh, behavior that destroys our relationships, destroys trust and uh, harms uh, people. So um, that's what we, we need to continue to foster. Uh, that we need to continue to look for uh, officers that, that uh, represent our community, all segments uh, of our community that bring diverse backgrounds and perspectives uh, of our community and make sure that uh, they're supported when they uh, when they call out injustice, when, when, when they stand up and uh, prevent uh, harm uh, to our community. 
I think this is a good follow up question um, from the chat. It says, how does the chief feel about how his officers have responded during the George, Flo George Floyd protest? So. Here, here, th th this is a, a, a good question. Um, I, I know I see it. I see some great work that's being done. Uh, I see officers that are stepping up and protecting the good people of Denver. I see officers that are putting themselves in harm's way in order to keep people safe as well as to protect uh, this beautiful city that we love. And so I see that and, and, and I'm encouraged, but I also see things that I'm not proud of and uh, that takes away from the great work that the vast majority of our officers are doing. Uh, the women and men of the Denver Police Department, as well as the mutual aid partners that are continuing to put themselves in harm's way. That work should be commended. We, we should be, we be very thankful that they're willing to, to, to uh, stand there and, and protect uh, people. The bad behavior, we have to call out and we have to hold them accountable for their actions and uh, that's what what needs to to uh, happen. Um, it, it's disappointing that uh, some uh, individual actions ha have uh, uh, eroded some of the uh, amazing work that continues, the amazing dedication that that uh, continues in an effort to keep our community safe. Uh, but if we don't hold our count, our our our, our people accountable for their uh, actions, then that continues and, and it's our commitment. And and I think uh, uh, that the officers, the officers that uh, are doing this good work uh, expect that they expect us to hold uh, our team uh, accountable and, and the individuals that aren't getting it right. So the individuals that have made missteps and, and created harm that uh, we have to do something about it and, and the community uh, deserves that as well. The community uh, deserves uh, to have a police department that uh, holds itself accountable and holds its officers accountable. Let's see. Try and get another good one. Uh, this is from uh, Facebook. Uh, this one, this this one is a pretty lengthy question, um, so I'll just read it off. It says, uh, do you support changing Colorado law to impose a duty to intervene when officers witness another officer using unreasonable force? What are you doing to support this change in law or policy in DPD? Two, what is the current DPD policy on using chokeholds? If it is allowed in any circumstance, do you intend to change it in light of police killing in instances where it has been used in unwarranted situations by DPD in the past. So uh, two two part question and uh, yes, uh, we fully support uh, the duty to intervene, uh, a law requiring the, the duty to intervene. Uh, you just look at that video. You just look at the video of the death of, of George Ford, Floyd, the horrific death. It, it involved four officers, and if any one of them would have said enough, if any one of them would have said stop, then we wouldn't know George Floyd's name. So there absolutely has to be a, a duty to, to intervene to try to prevent these types of horrific killings. Secondly, on the, the chokeholds, mm -hmm. um, we have, uh, you know, through the community's help, we have strengthened policies, but uh, uh, strengthened policies to put strict uh, prohibitations on uh, carotid control holds or, or a chokehold. Uh, we also have 
uh, prohibitions. We also prohibit uh, the body weight and, and placement of, of knees on, on necks and, and on backs and heads and, and body weight. And then also a, a, a duty uh, that once person, once somebody is in custody, that they're either rolled over on their side or lifted so we can reduce uh, any kind of positional asphyxiation. Uh, these were some uh, of the ideas that the community has brought forward, but I want to be careful here. I don't want to say that, you know, hey, uh, uh, our, you know, our policies uh, are good. Uh, what we're going through, this this movement is is bigger than than just our department. Uh, this is global when, when you talk about uh, how it's impacting our state, our country, and and uh, nations uh, across the globe. And uh, we have to take uh, yet another look uh, at, at these and, and see what's working and what's not working. We have to uh, see how uh, we can work together to prevent these types of horrific tragedies, uh, the, the, these uh, killings that, that should not happen. Uh, in our community. Um, uh, Jamie, Jamie Winkler from Facebook says, thank you. Thank you for beginning the discussion and um, she has three questions. I'll just pick off one or we'll do it. We won't do them all at once. Uh, she says, does every officer wear a body cam at all times? Question or if not, what is the current protocol? So uh, on body cams, um, I, I want to give a brief uh, answer, but then uh, in the chat group, we'll put a link to our policy as well. That way, uh, Jamie and others can get uh, a little bit more detailed. Okay. Um, every officer and every frontline supervisor in the Denver Police Department is required to wear the, the body camera. Uh, any officer, regardless of rank, working off duty, uh, also has to wear uh, a body camera. And uh, body cameras have, have helped. Uh, it's it, it, you know it's something it's a tool that is that has helped improve uh, accountability. But uh, again, um, you know we have to take several steps back, and we have to look and, and make sure that that our policies uh, one are aligned with our values. But now we have to incorporate uh, all of this. It, it, you know, what is the best path moving forward? And we need the community's help in, in doing that. But um, it, we will post uh, in the chat uh, group here uh, the link to, to the body cam uh, policy. Uh, and again, we're uh, we're taking a step back. Uh, we want to um, open uh, the door for, for conversation about the, the, the policies within uh, the police department, recognizing that that uh, we, we need to do better. Um, another one from Jamie. Uh, she says, is there a program that is strongly supported for officers to come forward who have firsthand witness misconduct by another officer. So uh, our our entire policy manual is online, and uh, there is a, a a component of the policy that requires officers to to report misconduct. Uh, and a pathway for them to, to do that, uh, utilizing uh, both the chain of command, internal affairs, or an outside uh, source. Um, uh, again, um, I think it's important that we uh, recognize uh, officers that would have the courage to, to step forward and, and say, you know, enough, stop, uh, inter to, to, to intervene and, and to point out uh, mis misconduct. Uh, we need to celebrate uh, those officers and uh, acknowledge it, encourage it, and make sure that that becomes the culture of, of every officer that wears this uniform or, or this badge. And uh, we're 
we certainly will work with the community to, to find better ways to, to, to do that, uh, to hold ourselves accountable. Um, so, uh, Jamie, you know, two tough questions or two great questions. Um, thank you. Find some more good ones in here. Okay, here's a here's a good one from Aaron Aaron Gobra. He says there are many roles in the community that could be better filled by a social worker instead of a law enforcement instead of law enforcement. I know that the Denver School Board is already looking to end its contract with DPD in regards to police roles in schools. Can you pledge to analyze what other city roles police are occupying that could be filled by nurses or counselors instead? Uh, Aaron, uh, you're right, and 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 again, uh, we 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 need to step back and, and review uh, everything that we do. Uh, we we have uh, some areas where, uh, to Aaron's point, uh, putting individuals uh, that are not law enforcement into public health situations, uh, people that are, are are facing some mental health challenges. We're seeing some positive impacts uh, of that with our co-responder program and then uh, also uh, a program uh, called Al alternative response where uh, instead of a, a police officer, uh, a fire truck and, and paramedic uh, ambulance going to some low level calls that what if we eliminated the sometimes trigger sometimes the uniform uh, of a police officer or somebody that uh, has uh, some low level uh, they're, they're not violent uh, they're not creating harm to themselves or others uh, but just need some help uh, that that what would it look like if we removed the, the the police officer response, the 911 call that that dictated the police officer response, and uh, we're certainly working uh, towards that direction. That's kind of that 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 the concept of uh, using the, the the public health lens to look at public safety issues and uh, recognizing that, uh, that that outcomes may be better by utilizing individuals that have different skills to include nurses and mental health uh, uh, technicians and such. So uh, we want we see uh, some, some direct benefits uh, of that. And uh, again, uh, it would be important to, to uh, explore expanding those types of, of alternative responses to our community. Let's see. Here's another good one from Steve Zorn. And it's it's pretty lengthy also. He says, why does the DPD call crimes complaints if the person committing the act is law enforcement? This happened to me in District 1 with officers Hernandez and Sergeant Wallace. Both members of DPD told me that I could not report crimes against law enforcement. When I called to complain, it was swept under the rug by a by IA or AI. Or it was swept under the rug, but with a statement that said they made a mistake, but no disciplinary action were taken. It was clear it was a clear case of obstruction. Well, uh, Steve, uh, what what I can tell you is that uh, complaints that that come in against the Denver uh, Police Department that there is a level of review by the district attorney's office. I, I can tell you that uh, this district attorney has filed charges uh, against uh, a Denver police officer in the recent uh, past. So certainly uh, complaints can uh, complaints of law violations 
uh, certainly uh, can be uh, charged uh, as such. Uh, and then there's also that second level of, of review from the Office of Independent Monitor. Uh, so, so every uh, complaint that comes in uh, gets that level of review. So uh, in the chat group, uh, we'll, we'll I, th I think we've already posted uh, the, the Office of Independent Monitor's uh, address uh, or email address, I'm sorry, link in there. And uh, I, uh, it, it's something that uh, comes to, to the word accountability and, and we must uh, hold ourselves accountable. Here's some more good questions from the chat. Someone says from the chat, hi in process, what characteristics will you prioritize? S say prioritizing hire, oh hiring? Uh -huh. oh. What characteristics do you guys prioritize, prioritize when hiring um, officers? So, uh, you know, really uh, something that's, that's difficult to measure is uh, what's in somebody's heart. Right. We, uh, I mean, it, it kind of goes back to some of these other questions about uh, having social workers or uh, nurses and healthcare professionals uh, in there. We, we, we want officers that care about their community and uh, the better job that we can do identifying and hiring uh, officers that care about people, uh, that care about their neighborhoods, uh, gives us uh, an, uh, an opportunity to do better and uh, it, it's a, a way that we can uh, get uh, diverse backgrounds and diverse perspectives, not just from the outside, but from the inside and to help change law enforcement and to change this police department. Uh, if we have uh, folks like myself who grew up, grew up in North Denver, I, you know, deeply connected to the community. Uh, you want those strong ties and, and uh, we, we need officers that care about people, uh, that care about our neighborhoods, that care about our city. And, uh, you, know, that, that, you know, frankly, all of us that, that want to improve, that want to continue to learn, that want to continue uh, to do better and, and uh, uh, that can say, you know, hey, I, I, I might have thought I, I know what's going on, but uh, that are open to learn uh, new perspectives. And uh, that those are the types of characteristics that that we're, we're looking for uh, in the women and men that make up uh, the police department, both uh, sworn and civilian. We have some more um, questions from the chat. Um, someone says, if you could What 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 would policing look like if we could start over from scratch? What what should it look like? Wow. Uh, it, it, it's a great question and uh, I I don't have the answer. Uh, I think it touches on some of the things that we've talked about a little bit, some of the systemic uh, issues that we have in the, in the criminal justice system and, and some of these other systems that are intertwined uh, with it. Um, I, I think that this, this, mo this moment, this movement uh, really challenges us to reflect on what's going on now and to really uh, take that step back and, and, and ask those types of questions. But I, I don't have the answer to that one, but it, 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 it is a great question. Cool. We'll get another one from the chat. Um, it says, how does the police internally address the us versus them mentality that uh, has a tendency, a tendency to develop? develop? Uh, you're right. Um, uh, and, and 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 this is uh, a, a time when uh, again we need to to come together. It shouldn't be us versus them. 
right? Uh, our officers, they come from the community. They're, they're uh, people, just like the people that we serve. They're sons and daughters, they're parents, they have families. Uh, we can't lose sight of that perspective. Uh, it cannot be an issue of us versus them. This needs to be all of us versus the issue of injustice. And when we can get to that point, when we can work together as, as, uh, as many steps back as, as, as we've uh, recently taken, again, uh, through uh, our own actions um, here in law enforcement, um, we must uh, break down uh, any of those divides because we as law enforcement, we as uh, the Denver Police Department, we don't we don't have uh, the answers. We certainly cannot do this uh, alone. The only path forward for us as a community is to work together. That's the only path forward. And uh, police officers, police departments, um, hunkering down and and uh, uh, you know not working with community that that's detrimental to the only way that we can uh, do better and uh, and that that is us uh, communicating building dialogue building relationships trying to rebuild trust uh, listening uh, to, to the community needs and uh, pledging to do better, to have a better department, to have a better city, to have a better community. The only path forward is us working together. Uh, we, we can't do this alone. Um, here's another one from the chat. Um, Rachel, Rachel asks, um, why hasn't the person who attempted to run over a protester not why has the person why hasn't the person who attempted to run over a protester not been arrested why have they not been arrested so uh i can tell you that this is a uh, an open active uh investigation uh we have to be uh, sensitive on uh what we can share on on open uh, investigations um here uh we review this closely with the denver uh, district attorney's uh office uh if we share too much uh, information on on open cases it can jeopardize uh these types of of uh outcomes and if we contribute and 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 have a misstep uh then that further exact, exact, exacerbates an injustice, right? The person responsible isn't fully held accountable. And so um, this is an open uh, case and, and we're working uh, hard uh, to make sure that uh, it has an appropriate uh, resolution. Um, here's another one from Rachel in the chat. Um, she says, do you see value in longer training at the academy to become to become uh, to become a police officer that addresses diversity, multiculturalism, social justice, and history of racism, etc. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, I, you know this this is uh, too big of a movement for us not to pay attention, and we have to re-examine all of the things that that we do to include. Training. Training is a huge component of uh, how we serve our community. We have to uh, recruit the right people. We have to train them the right way. And then we have to hold our people accountable if we uh, fall below our standards, if we fall below the policy expectations, if we fall below uh, the values that uh, we in our community espouse. We have more from the chat. Um, Seth from the chat asked, what are, you, what are you doing to reduce the number of officers involved in, in, uh, in shootings? Uh, I, I think this uh, goes to training uh, as part of it. Um, this is a big issue. 
we, uh, we, we, we've been leaning forward on, on some aspects, but again, I, I don't want to say that we figured anything out because we must re-examine. This is too big of a movement for us not to take a hard look at every single thing that we do. Uh, currently, we utilize uh, some some innovative training uh, that, that utilizes uh, virtual technology, but um, it's important that that uh, we look at everything that we do and, and see if there are ways that we can do better. And um, we're saying right now, we're pledging right now that we are open uh, to that and, and open to, to hear from our community that, that their perspective may aid in uh, the training, uh, that, that it may aid uh, in the development of, of uh, our responses. And uh, we have to take a hard look and, because uh, we, we want to do better. We, we have to do better. We cannot stay on this path. Uh, here's another good one from the chat. It says, did FOP or DPD donate to any political parties or candidates? If so, can you explain how that isn't corruption? Uh, I I'm, I can't speak for the the union or the labor groups. Uh, I don't I don't know uh, if or or who uh, any of the the labor groups may have uh, contributed to uh, political candidates or causes. Sorry, there's a lot of there's a lot of questions here. OK. Um, so we're coming towards the end, so I'll try to pick some some pretty good questions here. Really want to get some. Get, get a good couple of more. Here's a good one from Shaya. Shaya. Shaya asks, how do you uphold the pledge you took as a member of the of the brother the Brother Keeper Alliance? My no, excuse me. How do you uphold the pledge you took as as a member of the My Brother Keeper Alliance? Well, uh my brother's keeper and, and uh, other uh, community groups are, are important uh, allies in 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 how uh, not not the police department, but how the community can uh, help people. Um, you know, it it's about building relationships. It's about working in partnership and collaboration. Uh, with with many groups, um, we certainly don't have it uh, completely figured out, but there there have been many uh, positive steps that have been taken, many uh, positive actions uh, that have been uh, taken, uh, partnerships and collaborations to to help people. We don't want to lose sight of of that. However, uh, kind of uh, an answer that we've stated a little bit, um, we have to re-examine everything that that we do those uh, strong relationships with community based organizations that help people is uh, certainly part uh, of the solution and, and we have to uh, continue to, to uh, rebuild uh, the, those relationships and trust. Do we have, do we have time for one more? Uh, here's, a, here's a really good one. Uh, this one I definitely want to know affects me too. Uh, this one says the man in the car with his pregnant lady who was fired at. How how do you defend uh, those cops those cops actions? So, uh, you know, th this is something that uh, hurts and and uh, must be reviewed, and, and we must uh, hold our officers accountable for their actions, and, and uh, we will.
I just want to um, say thank you for um, having this open dialogue. I think this is a great first step to us um, having some real change. Um, I feel like this is the first time in this country where um, we're actually having that conversation. We're actually having that tough talk about injustice and racism. And I think um, a lot of people are going to be happy. And I think we're making um, a good first step to to change and progress. And I, I want to thank you for that. Well, uh, again, thank you for creating the space uh, on Monday, uh, allowing me to, to meet with you, to talk with uh, the other young leaders that are stepping up uh, because they, uh, they, they want to make sure that the message uh, is heard. Uh, that the message is heard loud and clear. Uh, I, I know that uh, some of the conversations that I had with, with some of the, the young leaders that I got to spoke to that I got to speak to uh, really uh, helped, helped me uh, attain a, a greater level of, of understanding. Um, and and uh, these types of conversations need to continue. Um, that said, you're right. This is uh, just just uh, one step. Uh, there'll be an, uh, an ongoing series of, of uh, opportunities or conversations uh, like this. Uh, we want to do uh, better in the future. We're committed uh, to, to doing better uh, in the future. We have to. Uh, we cannot just, we cannot go down the same path. Um, that said, uh, again, there are people that that aren't able to join us. The, the, the digital divide, uh, people that don't even have homes uh, in order to plug a computer in uh, to join us. So, so we also have to, to hear uh, from from people that are impacted by the police as well. And, and our, our our pledge continues. Um, so that we, we'll we'll use uh, one that email uh, address. We'd ask if uh, folks could help us, maybe even uh, capturing like video interviews from people experiencing homelessness and, and their perspective that can be uh, downloaded into that email uh, address. But uh, our ongoing uh, commitment is is to do this work, uh, this hard work that uh, I don't have the answers to, um, but. Hopefully, uh, you know, working uh, together uh, is how we can get uh, answers to these uh, historical challenges, these systemic challenges, these institutional challenges uh, that are interwoven and uh, you know, based in uh, bias, uh, based in uh, some uh, some economic uh, divides as well uh, and and work together to, to try to find uh, some solutions. So uh, that that said, um, thank you uh, for this. Uh, thank you for what uh, the, the other young leaders are, are, are doing and uh, we hope to do better in the future. Uh, thank you and, and stay safe. <laughs>